Jessica has two repertoires to call upon, feeling comfortable to mix both. Charmaine is slightly older. She too has mixed the two styles. The card game depicts people using the traditional symbol, and notice that her stick people even started out as semicircles. The kangaroo and the trees are from a side-on view. Sherilyn feels she wants to draw all her people in the traditional way. These people are women, as revealed by the digging sticks. In Aboriginal society, women are gatherers of food. Stephanie is eight and is very clear how she wants her picture to be. She's confident in her use of symbols and colours, reflecting life around her. In this case, the social campfire gathering. She uses traditional symbols. But notice the baby in the parager, or baby carrier, is a stick figure. The trees and the humpy are from a side-on view. Kylie is nine and a prolific drawer, content to draw in a traditional way or to mix symbols. When asked to draw herself at that moment, she confidently drew herself sitting on a chair. Symbolism from Aboriginal culture appears to be deeply embedded. For these Scottish children, too, the solution to how to draw a figure can be used again and again, and for this reason, children often develop their own characteristic schemas. All their people look very similar, and although not quite as clear-cut as the Aboriginal symbol, they do have a formulaic quality about them. Camilla's figures appear the same in different drawings. The women wear A-line skirts. Is this an easily recognized symbol for a woman? Vicky's drawings are also distinctive and recognizable as hers. She's keen to put in particular details, as we can see with the cat's ears. Any whiskers? <laughs> Where would they go? That's it. And this artist draws her family in the same way, all with the same hairstyles. <coughs> Could this be influenced by the images and symbols she sees around her? Artists often learn by copying from others or from books or objects. Kylie draws a kangaroo from a side-on view as she sees it here, which she may well repeat later. She clearly has schemas for many of the familiar things she sees around her. Honey ants, a lizard, a car a mixture of symbolic and Western styles. The kangaroo and snake are interesting. One object is behind another, often something children are not keen to do. This strong desire not to lose one object behind another, occlusion as it's known, can be demonstrated and has been the source of many interesting experimental studies. Can you draw me a picture of the red and the green ball? Lovely. Which one's the red one? That one. Now, which one's the green one? That's great. Well done. Mickey is five and draws the spheres separately, one above the other. But how will she respond if the task is explained in another way? If the task becomes part of a meaningful story? Robber. And we'll put this wall here. And the policeman's chasing the robber, right? And he's going to run away right behind the wall. And he's going to hide there. Can you draw me a picture of the robber hiding behind the wall?
Clearly, she will draw an object occluded if it makes sense to her. Okay. Ashraf is eight. When presented with the same sphere task, he has no difficulty with occlusion. How will children in Australia react to the same task? Shane is slightly younger than Mickey, and he too draws the apples one above the other. What about the robber and the wall? Shane has decided he doesn't want to occlude the robber. Kylie is older and draws her apples separately and side by side. She's also keen to put in detail. But we've seen occlusion in her drawings with the kangaroo and snake and the chair picture. So how will she respond to the robber and the wall task? Like Mickey in Dundee, Kylie will draw an object occluded if the context makes sense to her. So does it all depend on how the task is presented? Children at 9 and 10 have significant repertoires to build upon. But some things still prove difficult, especially when trying to draw realistically. It's not his head, is it? <laughs> the human figure in action always seems to present a challenge. seem to present a particular problem. Since the early tadpole figures, much progress has been made, and children develop particular styles of drawing personal to them. But why does it matter to these children in Dundee to be able to draw realistically? Is it a cultural expectation that a good drawing is a realistic one? Certainly their attempts to draw in this way seem to give them problems. The Aborigine children are freed from this constraint. It never seems to be an issue for them. They can confidently call upon another symbolic repertoire with understood and accepted meaning. We are all influenced by the images and symbols of the culture around us, and we've seen this reflected in the drawings of children. But does cultural influence merely sit alongside a universal development process? Or is it so deeply embedded that it becomes a determining factor within that process?